you know it's true everything i do i do it for youtube yes i held back the video this week because i was expecting some more exciting posts but at the weekend robin hood prince of thieves arrived it is ridiculous it is responsible i believe at least partially for the really really lengthy chart success of the brian adams hit song that we all eventually got a bit fed up with uh to say the least it um has some dodgy accents that's joked about memorably in robin hood men in tights has a dubious grasp of geography to say the least but you know what I'm looking forward to revisiting this one. I'm looking forward to putting this on one weekend, having the surround sound going, uh, just having it on the big screen and having fun with Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, even if only for the prime villainous turn from Alan Rickman. So that arrives at the weekend and I wanted to obviously mention that on this video. I know a lot of people have picked it up. Um, I think nowadays and probably at the time, weird that it may seem I always still prefer Waterworld for my big budget Kevin Costner fare but I tend to like most Costner movies and Robin Hood Prince of Thieves is one I will gladly revisit. So we got that one done. Mixed bag today. Uh, Dynasties, I don't know if anyone has seen this. I haven't but obviously uh, I loved what I watched of Frozen Planet so far and I bought the two seasons of Frozen Planet. I love the Blue Planet. I kind of like all the Life on Earth stuff. So I'm looking forward to hearing David Attenborough's dulcet tones uh, guide me through various parts of the Animal Kingdom once again. Dynasties is there. That will be a good one to enjoy at some point. Although I was keen to pre-order this, I've never seen it. And I don't think I'm going to watch it on the run-up to Christmas. It's nil by mouth. Um, I was reminded that this was coming out in a, a nice sort of scrubbed up Blu-ray form by some interviews I had with Gary Oldman and praise again for the film. I, I can't recall, I think this may be Oldman's only directorial feature. Um, he certainly hasn't gone on to... to directs much else that I recall and uh, he was saying that after the success of this he didn't exactly get showered with offers of people giving him money for projects he wanted to do so he'd you know stayed focused on his acting and and that's that's that and this holds up as a magnificent film according to all those who've already been brave enough and tough enough to watch it I'm going to embrace myself for that experience. I, I do look forward to it. I might even pick it for the podcast at some point. Uh, although I will make sure that we've been watching cheerier stuff uh, around about the time that I pick this one. Bit of Bob Hope. Bob Hope in your life. Uh, the Cat in the Canary and the, is it the Ghost Breakers? Yeah. Um, I have vague memories of both of these. I enjoy Bob Hope and this kind of stuff. I've seen them. The Ghost Breakers is a film I think I always used to confuse with Scared Stiff, which is a Jerry Lewis Dean Martin film. But you know, they, they both go for the laughs among the enjoyably atmospheric spooky vibes. And I'm looking forward to, to revisiting these, refreshing my memory. I've probably not watched either of these since I was about like nine. You know, they tended to be scheduled on BBC Two early in the morning during winter holidays and I would watch them and love them then. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, The Cat and the Canary is the one I think that more people mention. And I wish off the top of my head I knew how many versions of The Cat and the Canary there was. But uh, yeah, this, this is good. I have a, a box set of the, the road movie somewhere. I like a bit of classic Bob Hope and uh, these two, I would say, fit in that remit. Almost to the end now, I had to cave in and get the uh, the Bowie Dock um, Moon Age Daydream. I don't think there are any special features on this disc. There doesn't seem to be much mentioned here, but um, 
I'm quite the Bowie fan. I think most people are a fan of Bowie. Um, I wasn't brave enough to watch Stardust from a year or two ago, which is allegedly pretty awful, and they couldn't get the um, rights to license the songs for it, so it seems a bit pointless. This uh, should be a good doc to watch. Again, I'll probably need to plan a day of music docs because I still haven't watched the Let It Be doc, the Beatles one. I got that nice set. Um, there are different different things on Netflix. I think there's the Credence Clearwater Revival, um, sort of part doc, part concert uh, movie, and that looks good because I love a bit of Credence. Uh, and there's some other stuff. I've probably been meaning to revisit the Last Waltz and and different things for for some time. Uh, that would be good to have a, a musical day. Last but not least, your bunch of gets. Yeah, I almost tried to go into an impression of uh, record aid or whatever, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to embarrass myself. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not. I'm not going to go down that road. I have seen the young ones episodes many times. Um, this looks like a nice set with the extra features that are on there, including something about the, the guest stars, uh, which which should be interesting. It has been a while since I've watched them, so it'll be fun to revisit. And was this another one? It was maybe only 12 episodes. I don't know, it was around about that number. There were the two seasons, um, but I can't remember if each season was six episodes. So... I am sure there are many Young Ones fans out there. Hopefully this looks good in this format, but the extra features were what uh, made it worthwhile, made it pretty much an essential purchase. It says there are 10 new commentaries from cast and crew, so that leads me to think that there are 10 episodes. Uh, that would make sense. I hope there are other people out there that like the young ones and if so feel free to uh, comment below and ask if I learned all of my YouTube skills at Scumbag College. You can do that, that's okay. This week on the podcast Tyler has picked Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind which I think will make for an interesting conversation. If you haven't watched that film in a while it is one that rewards uh, a repeat viewing it is uh it is an interesting and uh, a very good film slight spoiler for my opinion there um so yeah i'm looking forward to chatting with the others about that and i picked vamp because i wanted some 80s horror comedy goodness and i think vamp is a film that is often overlooked in terms of horror comedies in terms of vampire movies and in terms of 80s movies that uh, that get love showered upon them. The Vamp discs that I own, I own it on Blu-ray twice. One of them had a documentary on there that I'm looking forward to hopefully checking out before we record. The other one had um, different extra features, including a commentary track with Robert Russler and Callum Waddell. And it reminds me of why i'm not a big fan of callum waddell it's um i don't usually sort of, you know name check people if i'm being too critical of them but you know any vamp fans out there if you already have a disc and you're happy with the extras i'm just saying don't necessarily be won over by the offer of a commentary track with uh with waddell it's very very much on the lines of oh yeah she was hot then, wasn't she? Oh, did you kiss her? Oh, yeah, and I heard you went to kiss this girl and, you know, I bet you would have at that time with uh, Robert Russler, obviously, uh, enjoying a walk down memory lane uh, to that time in his career and his life. But it's, it's pretty poorly moderated and Waddell seems interested in taking things far too often down... Uh, a fairly tasteless and pointless track so i was disappointed by that i still love the movie it's like spoiler warning for my opinion again uh there are plenty of good extras dotted around though between the different discs you can buy so if you see vamp on blu-ray 
certainly worthwhile. Uh, Dee Dee Pfeiffer features in a few of the extras talking about her experience on the film, talking about her uh, like general life at that time is quite an eye opener. So I recommend that. But uh, yeah, you can pick and choose whichever one you see going uh, cheap as long as it's Blu-ray and it's got some extra features on there, whether you end up with the commentary track or uh, documentary and other bits and bobs, then you're onto a winner because Vamp is good enough and deserving of your time and attention. That is it for this week. There will be more posts due this week, depending on whether or not uh, it gets to me around Royal Mail strike dates. So, you know, if not, just have to be patient because... Uh, solidarity with the striking workers throughout the UK this year and yeah I will speak to you soon bye